Welcome to the Business Mechanic Show. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund. In today's show, we're going to be talking about the inspiring sales manager. And in particular, being the sales manager that your team needs. I'm going to share some vital behaviors, some best practices, and some pitfalls that you absolutely want to avoid at all cost. So let's get started. Sales leadership is about inspiring salespeople to achieve remarkable results, hit their goals. And the true purpose, the reason you're there as a sales manager is to develop your team's success by motivating them, helping them develop discipline, then to achieve their individual and collective goals. But is there a secret to this? Yeah. I believe there is. There's pro approaches and mindsets around this that I believe many sales managers, especially ones who have moved from being a successful salesperson to sales management, they're missing out on some of these steps, secrets, if you will. Let me share a couple of those secrets with you. First, the single most important is ownership. Great sales leaders hold themselves accountable to the mirror test. Or, in other words, assessing themselves daily to ensure they mirror the kind of person that they would respect, one that they would believe in. And part of that daily assessment involves being genuine in all their interactions. Sales leaders must be themselves and not pretend to be something they're not. And if you're sure about something, you feel confident but if you don't know, it's okay to say, I don't know. They actually respect you for that. So many people in leadership get themselves tripped up on that. They fake it. And believe me, your team may not tell you to your face, but it registers. And this honesty will make great salespeople like you even more trustworthy of you. When they trust you, they'll respect you. When they respect you, you can lead them. Salespeople desire affiliation with individuals. People work for people, not for companies. And they desire it being connected and affiliating with individuals who are clear about who they are, confident in who they are, and confident in what they're not. As you well know, selling can be an emotionally taxing event. It's a tough job, especially mentally. And salespeople need to have leaders who they trust and believe. And more than any other role in the organization, salespeople can smell inauthenticity a mile away. So being genuine and transparent is absolutely essential. A lack of authenticity and clarity about your identity will make creating a positive sales culture challenging. It's going to be very difficult for you. Leading with authenticity and clarity can significantly impact your ability to inspire your salespeople. Leaders who genuinely believe in their sales team's abilities can build their confidence and inspire them to push forward to achieve all the results, great results, magnificent results, the results you need them to achieve. And your role in inspiring salespeople is not just about being authentic, but also about creating an environment, a culture that's conducive to growth and success. Sales managers must foster an inclusive culture, recognizing and celebrating individual and team success stories. Sales management, as I think it's painfully obvious, is a critical role in any organization that's going to determine the success of the business. It's a heavy weight. Sales leaders are responsible for building customer relationships, ensuring customer satisfaction, driving sales revenues, all through others. It's not all about you. It's about your team. And they're only going to be as good as you are at leading them. 
And it's essential to understand that leadership isn't merely about managing tasks, but also it's about leading, inspiring, motivating, influencing your team to achieve their best results, a positive culture. And great, exceptional sales leaders hold themselves accountable to this mirror test I speak of. They assess themselves daily to ensure that mirror staring back at them is the kind of person they respect, that they would follow, and one they believe in. And one of the essential traits of great sales leaders is authenticity and clarity. Leaders who genuinely believe in their sales team's ability can build confidence and inspire them to push themselves beyond what they think they're capable of. They remove self-limiting thoughts. When you're an authentic sales leader, you create an environment that creates this trust and respect, open communication that is 100% essential to a successful sales team. Because this environment allows them to have meaningful conversations with you about their progress. They're open to feedback. They're open to your help. They're open to your guidance. If they're fighting you in any way around developmental feedback, it's probably something you're doing incorrectly. And it may be this authenticity issue that I'm speaking of. Because when you want to identify weaknesses and provide them construction feedback, you don't want to just be talking. You want them to be hearing. You want them to feel motivated to take direction, make the essential changes they need to make. And it's about creating an environment of being conducive to growth and success, an inclusive culture, celebrating individual and team success stories. And when a sales manager is authentic and transparent, they create a culture of trust that encourages salespeople to share their ideas and thoughts freely. And yes, even complaints, you want them complaining to you. You don't want them complaining to each other. That creates a downward spiral with a team environment. You want them to feel like if they come to you, they can speak freely and openly and that you will take some action or explain things to them that makes them feel like they're heard. They feel valued. And those who feel valued and heard are more likely to remain engaged and passionate, committed to you, their sales manager. And one of the great tools you can use as a sales manager is a disc assessment to understand their strengths, their weaknesses of each individual member of your sales team. These DISC assessments provide valuable insights into the behavioral styles of individuals, and that makes it much easier for you to communicate with them effectively. You learn their communication needs. They can then tailor their leadership and communication styles to then maximize their communication strengths, which creates the level of productivity and success that they're looking for. And I spoke of being authentic. How do sales managers, what trips them up and unknowingly create an inauthentic image of themselves? As a sales manager, one of the most important qualities you can possess is this authenticity. And to help you navigate this challenge, let me share some examples of behaviors that you are likely unknowingly committing, and it creates perceptions that are inconducive to your success and their success. I talked about this briefly earlier, but a lack of transparency. Keeping important information from your team or not being upfront about changes, challenges, company decisions that can make your team members feel like they're being kept in the dark. And any lack of transparency and hiding important information from your team can create an atmosphere of unease, suspicion, mistrust, and you do not want that. 
but you may unknowingly be creating that. So be transparent. Because it's so important to be genuine and open with your team particularly regarding important decisions and changes that affect them. When you're transparent, your team members are much more likely to trust and respect you and feel more motivated towards everyone working towards a common goal and making you look good. And another factor that can contribute to inauthenticity is your tone of voice the voice you use when communicating with your team. Being too formal, being too high energy that's not like yourself, or being drab and boring. Using jargon that they may not understand. Or even coming across as, this is the biggest sin, unapproachable. That you're too busy for them that their opinions don't count, their concerns don't matter to you, that can have a very negative impact on your team's morale, especially when it comes to complaints. I cannot stress that enough. You want them to complain to you, not to each other, not to a competitor, not to your customers, to you. And then you must listen like you really mean to listen. And when you can, either take action on it or explain why that's an issue. Often the why overcomes their negativity about something. Who, what, why, when, how. Think about all those. Help them with their critical thinking. And when you do that, you can make your team members feel more comfortable in approaching you. Whenever they have questions or concerns, you want them to come to you. You're the subject matter expert. And in addition to all that, it's super important to provide regular feedback and guidance to your team members. Like every day. If you're only giving feedback sporadically or you avoid difficult conversations, you put things off, you put things off, very bad. Your team's going to see you as inauthentic or you not being action-oriented or not caring about them, not caring about their development. You need to be predictable. You need to be consistent. And when you do it in a predictable and consistent way, it becomes less of an event and more of just how we do things around here. It becomes cultural. And you have to be bold and brave and willing to have honest conversations in a way that's meaningful to them, helpful to them, encouraging to them about their performance. Provide them constructive feedback. Help them grow as professionals. When you're committed to their success, they'll be much more committed to your success. And another crucial factor in being authentic as a sales manager. You've heard this before is leading by example. You've got to model the behaviors you expect. You got to model the behaviors and attitudes that you want your team to utilize. And if you're expecting your team members to work hard and meet targets, you need to demonstrate the same level of dedication and work ethic helping them with whatever you can to hit their goals. It only benefits you and the company. And your team's going to respect you for that. They're going to want to achieve more for you. They're going to follow your lead. You've got to practice what you preach. It's not what you say, it's what you tolerate. Keep yourself consistent in what you tolerate and don't let it go for long. And other behaviors that can be perceived as inauthentic, such as a lack of transparency and unapproachable tone of voice or body language. Let me talk about condescension. 
Don't be condescending to your folks. Don't be infrequent with feedback to them. That can undermine the trust. They need to know what's expected of them every single day, every minute of every day. And when you're inconsistent or even condescending with them, it creates a very tense and unproductive work environment. On the other hand, being transparent with your communication, providing regular feedback, leading by example, and demonstrating genuine care for them. You want them to care, you have to care. By doing all that, you create this super strong foundation for success. So let authenticity guide you and watch your sales management skills skyrocket. And speaking of skyrocket, do you want some rocket fuel as being a sales manager? Praise and recognition. The power of recognition and praise cannot be overstated, but it must be authentic. Authentic recognition and genuine praise can transform your sales team's performance, motivation, team success. It's not about offering empty compliments. It's about genuinely appreciating and acknowledging the efforts you must show your empathy, your appreciation, your care for them when they achieve something, even the small stuff. And when you do this right, recognition and praise become a very potent tool that not only boosts morale, but it inspires your sales force to excel beyond your expectations. So let's delve into the art of meaningful recognition, authentic praise, and uncovering how they can be harnessed to create a thriving, high-performance sales team. Avoid the empty praise. If it's insincere and you in any way display that it's not authentic to them, save your words. However, not all praise is created equal. Empty praise, insincere compliments that are not based on genuine appreciation. Do you seem flippant about it at all? Or condescending with it? You're going to do a lot of harm, even if it's just a joke. I was just joking. Ugh, that blows up in your face, folks. Empty praise can come across as very manipulative. And your team's going to see right through it. Vague compliments, they're going to see right through it. Insincere words, you're going to see right through it. They're going to feel patronized. And at worst, they're going to feel like they're being lied to or manipulated sleazy feeling to them. And that's all going to erode their trust for you, their respect for you. Which, as I've mentioned many times before, is 100% essential to a healthy team dynamic. But let's talk about genuine recognition, sincere appreciation for a job well done, boosting their self-esteem Ah, that's the heart of it. Their self-esteem, their confidence. When you can boost that self-esteem and confidence, make them feel good about themselves, that encourages them to continue performing at a very high level for you. And additionally, recognition can help foster a sense of camaraderie and teamwork. When you can strengthen the bond between your team members, that improves the overall team's performance. Providing specific and empathetic recognition requires more than just a generic compliment or empty praise. You need to understand your sales team members. You need to understand what's going on in their lives, what their strengths are, what their contributions are, what is special about them. And you've got to tailor your words to each individual team member. Not all praise works with all people. And if you've got somebody that has been working on a particular area of their sales skills, highlight that specific skill. 
or if they achieve a, a milestone or accomplish something, make a note of that. Call it out for them. And talk about how their efforts have contributed to not only their success, but the team success, the company's success. Tie it, align it to the big picture. And again, this will help you with that. Help you understand what motivates them. What's the best way to deliver praise? Learned this a long time ago. It's a process called SBIR, which spans, stands for Specific Behavior, Impact, Results, and this is how it works. Specific Behavior. Be precise about what behavior or achievement you're recognizing. For instance, highlight a particular sale or a successful pitch or exceeding a monthly quota or a goal of something. Impact. Once you've cited that specific behavior, explain the impact their behavior has on the team or the organization. How it impresses you and help them understand how their actions contributed positively, align them. It might be increased revenue, improved team morale, something they did for the team, enhanced customer satisfaction, the impact that improvement of that specific behavior is. And then what are the results? Illustrate the tangible results. This could include numbers, percentages, any quantifiable outcome that demonstrates the impact or the significance of their efforts. Let me give you a, just a quick little example. Your dedication to following up on leads and closing specific deals, that's the specific behavior, has significantly boosted our sales figures. That's the impact. As a result, we saw a 20% increase in revenues this quarter. And that's the results. And if you deploy SPIR as a format, as you structure your conversations and your recognition around this and acknowledging their hard work, and you provide clear feedback on why their efforts matter, you're going to be a motivator. You're going to create higher levels of productivity with the team. Sales management requires a highly engaged team. It's not command and control. You cannot beat them over the head. You cannot intimidate them. You have to inspire them. You have to engage them. You have to create an environment of trust and willingness, buy-in. And a big part of that is genuine recognition. It's a key driver. Be sincere, but you also have to tailor your recognition to each member based on their specific behavior profile, their contributions. That's going to drive a high level of engagement. So tailor it to them specifically. Avoid being too generalized or too broad. We're going to talk about how to recognize a team but this is really about recognizing the individual. I'm going to just give you 10 ways to recognize sales team members that is meaningful and inspirational. Probably pretty obvious, but personalize acknowledgement, tailor your recognition to the individual, highlighting their specific achievements, ones that are going to resonate with them personally, but requires you to understand their unique contributions. You have to be observing. You have to be catching them doing it right so that you can then convert that into specific behavior. And then you can acknowledge them accordingly. And certainly, a second way is public celebrations. Share success stories and achievements in team meetings, company-wide gatherings, the five-minute stand-up in the morning. Public recognition not only validates the, the person, but it motivates others to strive for excellence. 
The third way is peer applause. Encourage team members to applaud and appreciate each other. This fosters a culture of camaraderie and mutual respect. But make sure you don't play favorites with this. You need to be catching everybody doing it right. Watch your confirmation bias. When somebody's not particularly your favorite, you're going to pay less attention to their achievements. Avoid that at all costs. You need everybody on your team. And everybody needs to be recognized. And it has to be sincere. We're going to have a, another whole broadcast on how to deal with underperforming salespeople, but we're only talking about achievements at this point. The fourth way, and I've seen this, I've done it personally, I've seen others do this to a high level of success. It's very meaningful, and that's with written notes. Just craft a handwritten or heartfelt digital note. Could be a card expressing your appreciation. I've seen it written to the significant others of sales team members, thanking them for supporting your sales team member. Because very often high achievers work a lot of extra hours. They miss days off. They go the extra mile, which there's going to be a, a victim in that. Well, thank those folks that are, are being understanding and supporting your sales team members. But more importantly, a handwritten note to somebody that's on your team. Oof, rocket fuel. And then number five, think about individualized rewards. Consider offering rewards that are meaningful to the individual. Could be additional paid time off, professional development, opportunities to grow, or maybe even being on part of a, a, a project that they choose, something they're passionate about. Number six, this one's really, this is the long game, number six, mentorship opportunities. One of the things I talk about with all of my clients is how are you going to replace yourself? Who's going to be your replacement? And the best way to start developing a replacement is to turn them into a, a mentor. So provide them mentorship opportunities. Recognize top performers who you know are willing and have the personality type to help others. Give them the opportunity to mentor new or junior sales team members or someone that's struggling. This not only acknowledges their expertise, their specialists, but it shows that you recognize their strengths. And then the outcome of all that is you're helping them grow as leaders now I'm actually developing somebody to potentially be my replacement sometime in the future. Number seven, customer testimonials. Any feedback, any positive feedback from customers that's directly tied to one of your salespeople, please display it. Please call it out. Please do it publicly. Because when they know their efforts are appreciated by the clients, that can be very motivating. I think it's really smart to post these sort of things in public view. That way the whole team sees it, shipping sees it, accounting sees it, everybody sees it. Number eight, promote learning. It's the rare salesperson that doesn't have a deep level of need and appreciation for personal development. And if you can offer to them, your team members, the ones that want it, access to workshops or courses or resources that uh, align their professional growth to their aspirations, their goals in life, that's huge. That's a great way to recognize them. Number nine. A surprise celebration. Occasionally a, a surprise team, occasionally surprise a team member with impromptu celebrations. Whether it's a cake for a birthday or a small token of appreciation, even a joke gift. Show your appreciation. 
surprise them with it. And number 10, and this is the mother of all, continuous feedback. Make recognition an ongoing process rather than a one-time or inconsistent event. Build that as a cultural element within your team. Regularly acknowledge and provide constructive feedback to keep the motivation and improvement cycle going. Start every day with a five-minute stand-up meeting that begins with recognition. Start every meeting with recognition. Most importantly, you have to have yourself tuned into ways to catch them doing it right and then tell them you caught them. So that's the individual recognition. Let's talk about five ways to recognize sales teams, the team, and inspire the team as a whole. The first way is top performer awards. Each month, celebrate the highest achievers in your sales team with special awards. Recognize their outstanding efforts in front of the entire team. Highlight their impressive sales numbers or even exceptional customer feedback. Have a salesperson of the month or the biggest sale of the month or the best comeback of the month or the most counts open of the month. Find recognition and give them awards for that. Number two. Have a monthly spotlight. Each month, pick a team member who has consistently shown dedication and excellence. Share their success story. Tell a story about them. Highlight their journey, all the work and dedication and self-development they've gone through so they can shine as a role model for others. Number three, a continuous achievement club. Create this exclusive club for salespeople who consistently excel. Presence club, platinum club, whatever you want to call it. Top performers club. But members who achieve that level then have to be required to maintain that level of performance over time. The motivation is to stay in that prestigious group. It goes to their self-esteem. As part of that, it can be something as, as simple as a, a badge or a plaque or a designation under their title. Any kind of perk that you can think of, play to their self-esteem. Number four, create an environment of peer-to-peer -peer recognition. Encourage your team members to recognize each other's accomplishments. Open it up at the five-minute meeting or their weekly sales meeting or the monthly sales meeting. Anybody who wants to recognize where they've seen a colleague going the extra mile or achieving a significant milestone, bring that into your culture. Let them publicly acknowledge and applaud their efforts. And number five, have a wall of fame. Find space somewhere that you can dedica dedicate a wall of fame within your office or your company's intranet. Showcase the names, achievements of any of your top performers. And when it's out there publicly, it's a subconscious reminder, constant reminder of their excellence, which then encourages healthy competition. We like that. Never underestimate the power of genuine recognition. It's rocket fuel. Rocket fuel that propels your team towards unprecedented success. But you as their leader must make a conscious effort to appreciate and acknowledge their hard work. It's one of the toughest jobs on the planet. It's why it pays the most. Recognize their dedication, recognize their achievements. And if you're constantly doing that, regularly, consistently doing it, and it's genuine, it's authentic, you create this super positive environment that people want to be a part of and work harder in. Making sure you have this positive feedback loop. It not only boosts morale, but it drives performance. So remember as a sales manager, 
recognition. That's the catalyst that ignites the engines of success. Then I'm going to tie in the last very important part of this is you have to have the ability to communicate like a champ. That's all baked into what I've talked about now. But if you feel like you've got some gaps in your communication skills, that there are some, I don't understand or I don't know how to address certain things genuinely, sincerely, you need to work on that because good communication is the cornerstone of any successful relationship, whether it's personal or professional. And for sales managers, consistent communication is vital, but effective communication is essential. Because if you ever incorrectly send mixed messages or you're frequently changing your stance on something, you just, you end up, appearing either confused or inauthentic, that's going to crumble. It's going to break down their trust. That's going to damage your reputation. You don't want to do that. Because as I've mentioned before, the foundation of any successful business relationship is trust. And you need to be an exceptional communicator, whether it's with your team or your customers or your boss or the company or other departments. And part of all this is your reputation for reliability, which in turn builds trust that you're going to take action on things. You're going to follow through. You're going to do what you say you're going to do. You're going to listen like you really care. You're going to open your door, but it's not just an open door. It's open conversations. I'm going to say it again. You want them to come complain to you. Know what's going on in their head so that you can drain that negative energy out of them with somebody who can possibly explain it or do something about it. Be careful of creating confusion or doubt. Often they won't call you out on it. So you need to make sure you're structured and prepared for it ahead of time or your credibility is going to be undermined. Your trust eroded and morale decreases. So effective communication, consistent communication, authentic communication, making sure you stick to who you are, your values, your principles, you walk the talk, that you're true to yourself, and most importantly, true to your word. This inspires the confidence and respect that's going to propel you to be a top level, best of the best sales leader and avoid an inconsistent communication at all costs. Mixed messages, frequently changing your mind. It's good one week, it's not the next. Hold yourself accountable to being consistent, but also make sure you're establishing a culture of accountability. That has to be consistent too. You can't show favoritism. You can't let somebody get away with something that somebody else is not being allowed to. That's being inconsistent. That's going to harm not only the trust your people have, but it's going to harm your business. Because when you're consistent, that's clarity. They know what's expected of them. And it's the single most important element of great leadership is your team members know exactly what's expected of them. And consistently ensure that everyone's on the same page. They know what the rules are. They know what the expectations are. They know what good looks like. And you're constantly catching them doing the good. Anytime you can involve collaboration with your team, that all improves outcomes tremendously. But being inconsistent, they're going to not collaborate. They're not going to share with you. They're, they're not going to trust you. You want that consistent, positive reputation that you're reliable, accountable, you're clear, you're open. That's the reputation you're looking for.
trustworthy, that you're competent. And if you're not knowledgeable on something, say, I don't know. That's okay. When you have that kind of environment, that's going to not only motivate the team you have, but it's going to attract top talent. People want to work for good people. Or they're going to avoid working for you if you're on the other side of that. So it's essential to prioritize consistent communication with all your interactions. As I often have used the analogy, you must recognize that you're being followed by a documentary film crew all day, every day with the lenses on you. They're catching everything you say, everything you do, your actions, your behaviors. They're judging you all day. Keep that in mind. You have to be on. You have to be on your mark. You have to be on your best behavior. You have to think before you speak. Take the time. Slow, steady, consistent. Hope that helps. In the next podcast, we're going to talk about the 11 big no-nos in being an effective leader.